Well, hello and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for September's Coffee Break Talk with Delmarva Power and Pepco on the Energy Savings for Business and Power Maryland programs. Today, we are going to be talking about saving energy on more than lighting. We want to help you find incentives for your projects that are outside of lighting. My name is Steve Weaver. I will be one of the presenters. I also have John Becker, who I'll turn it over to here. Good morning, and thank you for attending. So we appreciate you all. Um, so I'm gonna kick it off with today's safety message. Uh, it's that time of year. Um, not that we're all looking forward to it, but it is a reality. So leaf raking. So uh, you just wanna make sure when you're raking your leaves, you wanna make sure that you're stretching that rake out. You wanna keep proper form. Um, it, it is a very exhausting and exerting exercise. Um, so you can get a great cardio uh, workout from it for sure. Um, when you're getting into it and you have those leaves stuffed in those bags, you want to make sure that you're lifting up those bags properly um, using your legs and not just bending over straight legged with your back. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using the proper equipment. Uh, you want to make sure that you're wearing the proper safety gear and clothing. You definitely want to make sure you sit down and take breaks. So nothing wrong when it gets a little warm, you're getting a little tired, uh, sit down and have a nice glass of uh, apple cider or lemonade, whatever you enjoy, and um, just be careful. All right, thank you. Next slide, please. So today's agenda, I, we just want to cover a little bit. We're going to be going over the Empower Maryland Act. Um, we're going to talk about ways to save energy more than just lighting. So, um, and then we'll have a Q and A. Um, so, anyone who has a question as we're going through, uh, please feel free to uh, pop it up in the chat, uh, and we'll look for those questions as we go throughout the presentation. So, uh, to start, uh, let's cover Empower Maryland. So. Uh, just to give you a little history here, uh, in 2008, uh, the Maryland General Assembly, they passed the Empower Maryland legislation. Uh, it was the Maryland Energy Efficiency Act. Um, they set a target reduction of 15% per capita, and that was electricity consumption. So, um, and this was by the demand, um, they wanted this to be by 2015, so that 15% in per capita electric cons consumption uh, and demand by 2015 from a 27,000 baseline. So Empower Maryland uh, is the state's energy efficiency program. Uh, it had an original goal, 15% reduction uh, in energy use and 15% reduction in peak demand uh, per capita. Um, and again, this was all based on 2007 baselines. Um, and the new Empower Maryland uh, is the state, uh, it's a state level initiative. Uh, it's aimed at reducing Maryland's electricity usage by 25% by 2020. So as you can see the timeline here, uh, we went through and by 2015, uh, that per capita reduction goal was achieved. Um, it was revised, new things happened in the new program cycle uh, in 2018 to 2020. Uh, there was a new structure that was set out for annual savings goal of 2% of the um, gross energy sales. Um, and then of course, we know what happened uh, with the COVID pandemic, uh, kind of derailed and shut everything down. Um, but just know that the programs continue to be strong. We came out with new budgets, new incentives, uh, and the same thing is being uh, considered right now for 2024, what's coming in the future. Uh, all of that information has been filed with the public service commissions for different uh, proposals from the different utilities throughout the state of Maryland. Um, they're all under review now uh, so there will be definitely more information coming in the future about uh, the programs and what additions we have. So uh, thank you, Steve. Um, appreciate that. Thanks, John. Appreciate the overview on Empower. I know me personally, I'm not looking forward to leaf raking here this fall, but those pointers and safety memos were helpful. I'll keep them in mind here, probably multiple weekends over the fall. So. Now we want to shift gears and talk about saving energy on more than lighting, talking about some different incentive pathways, ways you can see funding, help improve your facilities, make them more energy efficient. So when we look at non-lighting incentive programs, there are a couple different pathways or programs you can pursue. Building tune-up program, custom program, 
as well as miscellaneous high efficiency equipment. Each one of these programs is gonna have multiple ways you can pursue incentives, multiple ways you can get involved with the program and help your facilities become more efficient. When we look at the building tune-up, there are, as I mentioned, multiple options here. One of the greatest opportunities for yourself, other facilities, operations and maintenance staff are our operations and maintenance trainings. We hold them throughout the year, as well as partnering with a variety of other institutions. So the PEPCO Operations and Maintenance Training Program offers incentives for building operations personnel to receive nationally recognized training. So certainly if you're looking to gain skills, further your education development, grow in your career, this is a great opportunity. Some of the benefits you'll see from this are transform facilities into more comfortable and energy efficient environments. And what's great here is you can look at a different course or a uh, different syllabus that you wanna pursue and we'll incentivize you for taking that course. It's 80% of the course cost up to $1,000. So if you look here at the operations and maintenance course list, you may recognize some of these industry organizations or these associations. You may not be familiar with some of them. So I would highly encourage you to use one of the links we have on a following slide to look at the complete course list, but also go to the websites of these organizations and learn about what they do, see what offerings they have, and how you can build, expand, and grow in your career and help your facilities become more efficient. So as I mentioned, we have our course directories. They're listed here. We will distribute this. This slide deck is available for all participants today. The link is readily active, so go ahead, follow that, and then you'll be able to look at a variety of courses and even click on those, understand those in more depth and see what best suits your needs, your facilities and your buildings. Next, we wanna talk about full building tune-up. Again, building tune-up, we're talking about ways to help optimize current systems. We're not replacing any equipment, so we're just making what you currently have in operation more efficient. Full building tune-up is for buildings greater than 75,000 square feet with a building management system or energy management system. Again, it's intended to improve efficiency, improve operations of current systems. When you start a building tune-up project, there'll be some requirements or some items needed. We will need a detailed investigation report. It could be an ASHRAE level one, level two audit. It could be an in-house analysis done. And then as you look at different measures or areas to improve, we'll want to have a measure list or energy efficiency improvement measures detail, detailed out, a savings analysis, and then also a cost analysis for the implementation of each measure. We'll also then want to look at some either pre-trend data, and then once the project is complete, some post-trend data, and we'll also need a signed terms and conditions page. The incentive here is 75% of the project cost or 20 cents per KWH saved annually. And there is a cap of $25,000. And actually, I do apologize as I'm looking at this, that slide is incorrect in terms of the cap. So we will revise that and get that out. It should be, uh, <clears throat> $200,000 for a single building, $300,000 for campus buildings on full building tune-up. Next, we'll talk about small building tune-up. That's for smaller facilities, uh, less than 75,000 square feet, and it'll follow the same process flow, the same workflow as a full building tune-up. You'll go ahead, perform an analysis or an audit, come up with a list of measures, energy efficiency measures. You'll have a savings analysis, a cost analysis for each one, and then signed, condition, signed terms and conditions as well as trending data when required. The incentive here is 75% of the project cost or 20 cents per KWH saved. This is a $25,000 cap. Next, we wanna talk about monitoring-based commissioning. This is a multi-phase approach and ongoing process to 
optimize efficiency or resolve any um, operation, operational inefficiencies in equipment. Think of it as an ongoing commissioning process or kind of ongoing, you're able to make tweaks, adjust different systems to operate at their peak performance. There's multiple, multiple phases here. Phase one is where you set up some monitoring equipment to collect data to understand the current state of operations. Then phase two and three are the corrective actions, looking at what you're doing to enhance or be able to run at peak performance. Some requirements, 18 month contract with a service provider. We call service providers uh, anyone not the end use customer. So it can be a contractor, a vendor, an energy engineering firm. So you'll be working most likely with an outside vendor to help you on this initiative. Also the EPA portfolio manager, statement of performance or utility bill analysis. You'll wanna look at past data to understand the operating you know, conditions and energy use. That's kind of what we're comparing everything to then as you look to make improvements, a list of equipment to be monitored, and then also the signed condition terms and conditions page. The incentives are paid out in a multiple phase approach, a phase one and a phase three. So up front, phase one is 25% of the monitoring contract capped at $8,000. If you do perform an ASHRAE level two audit, you can receive four cents per square foot for that audit. It's not required with this program, but it is an additional incentive if you pursue that. And then phase three, we pay 17 cents per KWH saved annually at the completion of the implementation of all the measures. Next, we wanna talk about HVAC tune-up. We're kind of coming towards the end of cooling season. So there are some opportunities for you to maybe look at your split system units in this pathway for incentives. The units that are eligible, direct expansion or heat pump units, a unit is eligible for this incentive pathway once every three years. Unit and units must be operational before and after a tune-up is performed. So what happens during this is maybe your in-house staff yourself is going to do some minor efficiency measures for this. Clean the evaporator and condenser coils, use industry approved cleaning methods and cleaners, replace filters, and then any issues that could affect the efficiency should also be noted. Once those are performed, then that unit should be operating more efficiently. We pay out $100, excuse me, $140 for units three tons and overs, and then $30 per ton if the unit is three tons or less. I wanna quickly pause as we talked about a variety of the building tune-up measures and see if any of the participants have any questions. All right, it doesn't look like there are any questions up to this point, whether through the chat feature. And if, again, as a quick reminder, if you do have a question, you can type it into the chat or we can allow you to come off a mute and you can say that question to the audience. So we'll have that opportunity as the presentation continues on as well, but please, at any time, we're happy to answer questions. Next, we wanna talk about the custom pathway. So this could be an equipment replacement opportunity or a retrofit opportunity. What is custom? It's kind of a catch-all program and pathway for unique projects. Ultimately, it's an opportunity, so it could be equipment, it could be you know improving a retrofit, adding something on to current equipment where the measure is not listed on the prescriptive uh, incentive sheet. Typically what you'll need for this is we'll need to have a conversation with yourself and any vendors or the project stakeholder team. We wanna talk about the scope of work, understand what the baseline is going to be, look at any energy savings calculations that you've calculated. We need to review all those to ensure the project does have a valid opportunity to pursue incentives. We do need to ensure there are energy savings associated with the improvements, replacements, or your project scope. Some different examples of custom projects could be building envelope improvements, maybe windows, maybe a roof, white roof, 
um, looking at building or and or network controls, data center equipment, industrial processing equipment, and more. The incentive for a custom project is 25, per, 25 cents per KWH saved. When we evaluate the project or we discuss your scope of work, we're going to determine whether it's a retrofit or add-on to existing or it's end of life new capacity. There is a caveat with each of those. So on retrofit add-ons, it's up to 50% of the project cost and end of life new capacity, it's up to 75% of the incremental cost. So it would be one of those or 25 cents per KWH saved. It would be the lesser of those two to determine your incentive value. Lastly, we wanna talk about other prescriptive measures we have under the miscellaneous high efficiency equipment, ways you can pursue incentives. You may have to replace HVAC, whether it's a split system unit, a rooftop unit, or a chiller, we have incentives for those. So when you're, you know, maybe if you're in an older facility or older equipment and need to replace those, please work with us. We can help you receive an incentive for that piece of equipment, those devices. Also, variable frequency drives, we have incentives for those. Commercial kitchen appliances, a wide variety of them. We list them out on our miscellaneous high efficiency equipment sheet. So it could be an ice maker, could be a refrigerator. A wide variety of equipment types are available for an incentive. And lastly, we do incentivize window film. So that's an underutilized uh, measure, but we do have incentives for window film. It's a dollar per square foot. So those were a couple of different pathways to pursue incentives with your projects outside of our lighting incentives. Here is our Pepco and Delmarva Power Energy Savings for Business Program Portfolio. Again, it's gonna list each of the different program pathways you can pursue incentives for. I won't necessarily go ahead and read all of them, but if you have any projects that resemble anything here, please reach out. We're happy to help talk to you about the process, ensure that you're pursuing and maximizing the incentive for your projects. So that concludes the discussion of the presentation. Want to turn it over to any questions by the audience or anyone in attendance today. Hi, Steve, you have one question in the chat um, and it was asking if you said window replacements um, could be included um, under custom projects? Sure, so that's a great question. Thank you, Joseph, for looking at the chat feature and making sure to field any questions that come in. So yes, if you are replacing windows in your facility or in your building, there is potential for an incentive to be paid out on that. They would fall under our custom program. So we would wanna talk about the scope of work specifically, what you're going to do. We'd want to determine a baseline, and we'd also want to look at the uh, potential energy savings associated with that. So certainly we can talk in more depth offline, but yes, window replacement is eligible for incentives. It would follow our custom pathway, and the best first step in the process would be getting the project stakeholder team together. So any facility staff on the end user side, any contractors or vendors associated with the project, and then also the uh, Pepco and or Delmarva Power Energy Savings for business staff to talk about the project and then discuss the next steps. So, before we conclude, I do want to talk about our last slide here, or excuse me, it'll be our second to last slide, but we wanna thank you for joining us today. And lastly, we want to also introduce or make you aware of a financial resources meeting we're going to be holding in our Rockville office. So this is for any facility owners, any end use customers. It's on building performance and it's going to help 
you understand, navigate, and better learn about financial resources for me meeting building energy performance standard goals. That will be held next Tuesday, September 26th. It will start at 945 in the morning in Rockville, Maryland. It's in the office at 530 Gaither Road, Rockville, Maryland. And we would love to have you there. We have a panel of different presentations and speakers from different partner agencies and organizations that can help you navigate, better understand building energy performance standards, help you create a plan to address those if you are located in Montgomery County. That's where it is now. We do anticipate many other localities across the state implementing standards like this in the future. So whether you're currently impacted or you may be impacted in the future, it's a great learning opportunity, great way to engage with other similar owners or peers and learn. So we would definitely love to see you there. If you have any questions or would like to register, please reach out to us and we'll help ensure that that takes place. So that does conclude the presentation. I'll ask if there are any other questions in the chat or from the office. Have a great team with me. Uh, some other account executives, Zach and Jen, they work in Delmarva Power. Stephanie and Miguel and myself, we work in Pepco. So dependent upon your location, we'll ensure that you get to the right contact and we help you with your projects and make sure we're maximizing incentives for you. Any other last questions, Joseph? No, that's it. All right. Well, want to thank everybody again for joining. I know we'll end a couple minutes early, so that gives you a little bit of time to drink some more coffee or have a beverage here in the midday. And uh, we thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day.